Good day, mite. I'm an ear mite and I will be introducing me and my mates to you today. Our scientific name is Octodectus cyanotus and we love causing otitis externa. Remember that we're arachnids because we have eight legs. This is how we look. We are big, circular, and white. We girls are larger than the boys. As you can see, we have tarsal suckers on the first two pairs of legs and the boys have them on all four pairs. The boys have two ventral suckers on the back for mating. We are most likely seen in the external ear canal and the nearby skin of the host. You may even find us in other areas, like the collar part of the body and the tail. Let's take a closer look at our lives. Our entire life cycle is on the host, and it is around three weeks long. First, extra laid on the surface of the ear canal, larvae then hatch, go through two new stages and become adults. We love warm and humid conditions. We spread to a healthy animal when it gets close to an infected host. We can also spread by other roots, like through combs, brushes and beddings, because we can live off the host for about 12 days. Hmm, so who are our victims? We love cats so much that we are estimated to be causing half of the otitis externa in cats. We also love dogs, foxes and ferrets, but not as much. We are seen more frequently in kittens because they get really close to their mothers. So if the mothers are infested with ear mites, their kids are going to get infested too. There is a higher chance for cats to have us if they are outdoor cats and are living in pork environments. Well, we don't intend to cause discomfort or even diseases, but somehow we do. We don't burrow and we love eating the epidermal debris and tissue fluid. This triggers inflammation in the ear canal, which inflammatory exudate and dark brown earwax are produced. As time passes by, there will be hyperkeratinization in the epithelium, producing sheets of dry and waxy materials. Some holes may even develop a hypersensitivity reaction. Talking about inflammation, we hate it because it makes our living condition worse. However, the bacteria and fungi love it, leading to secondary infections. The hosts are going to scratch their ears and shake their heads because they get oral pruritus. You can see thin sheets of epidermal debris and dark brown earwax if you observe closer. Using an otoscope, you may even see us as white dots moving. I'm not supposed to tell you this, but to diagnose us, otoscope is certainly a useful tool. You can also use cotton ear swabs or Volkmann's curette to get some earwax and observe under the microscope. Volkmann's curette gives you the highest sensitivity to diagnose. I hate to talk about this part, but I still have to. So to prevent us, clean the ears of the animal regularly. Avoid contact with infected animals and disinfect shared equipment between animals. And I know you guys want to get rid of us. Macrocyclic lactins are one of the treatments. It is effective against head and body mites as well. However, insecticidal ear drops are more rapid to kill us than systemic macrocyclic lactins alone. You can also apply spolon formulations of selamactin and moxidectin with imidacloprid. Ivermectin can also be used as a topical treatment, but this is off-label. We don't have host specificity, so if your client is keeping both cats and dogs, ask them to treat them all. Follow-up period is at least 21 days because that's how long our life cycle is. Remember to treat secondary infections if there is any. Well, I hope you guys know more about me and my mates after my thorough presentation. Thank you.